Right, welcome to this first session of Context of Procurement and Supply. And in session one, we're going to be looking at different categories of procurement and supply chain management. So let me look at the learning outcome. Now, we talked about learning outcomes in the introductory session uh, and, and how important they are. Again, at the end of every session, go back and look at the learning outcome to check have I achieved that? Just one learning outcome here, again, taken from the SIP syllabus, you can cross-refer it. It's syllabus reference 1.1, and it states that you should be able to explain the categories of spend that an organization may purchase. Seems fairly straightforward. We're looking at the categories of, 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 um, of spend that an organization can, can get involved with. Okay, so that's it. Let's, let's move on. Let's have a look. First of all, let's look at what we call direct and indirect procurements. That's, that's one good classification. Um, what are direct procurements? Direct procurements are the kind of procurements which might involve say a, a retail shop buying goods for resale, so they, they're buying goods to resale, or it could be raw materials or part um, completed and manufactured products that an organization is going to work on. So if you're a car manufacturer, uh, it might be an engine coming in or an engine part or, or a wheel or something. It, 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 it's raw materials or components uh, which are going to be incorporated uh, in, in goods for resale as well as goods for resale. Okay, but, but the, the linked, the purchase and procurement of these items is linked very much to the output. The more that we, we produce, the more that, that, that we have our, our direct procurements go up. Okay, so they're in, in, in broad um, sync there. Indirect procurements, on the other hand, uh, would include other sort of ancillary items or overheads, so you know, services, operating expenses, um, goods that we, we use to maintain uh, equipment, repair and operating costs. These are almost some of the, some of the costs that are going to be there anyway, and, and not totally regardless of what we spend on, on direct procurements and, and our, our output, but, but they, 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 they aren't directly related to it. You know, if we double our, our output, we tend to double our direct procurements, uh, but we don't always um, double our indirect procurements. Okay, so that's a nice, and if you look at terms accountants use, they'll often talk about direct costs and indirect costs. So it's exactly the same concepts. If you look at, a, at, at any financial information, you'll see the way accountants split this off, and they'll talk about direct costs and, and indirect costs following broadly the same principles. Why do we need to distinguish between direct and indirect procurement, first of all? Well, key point, of course, is quality. Uh, we have to get quality right in procurements because the quality of our finished goods is dependent on the quality of, of the procurements. If we, if we bring in substandard goods, poor quality goods, that's going to have a direct impact on the quality of goods and services that we as an organization provide to our customers. Uh, but if we look at indirect procurements, this isn't necessarily the case. You know, if we get a delivery in of uh, stationery and it's substandard, it isn't going to make a dramatic uh, have a dramatic impact on, on the quality of the goods and services that we provide, is it, to our, to our customers. So I think that's a, one reason why, we, why I think we need to distinguish between um, direct and, and indirect procurement. Um, direct procurements are also held to stock because we tend to, to use these and sometimes uh, the demand may, may increase dramatically because of demands from customers. We need to keep stock. So we tend to have stocks of uh, goods in terms of direct procurements held in a warehouse or whatever. Um, and also for, for, for direct procurements, we tend to build up longer term relationships with, with suppliers. So this is what we're, we're now starting to talk about, about relationship building, aren't we? Supplier relationships. Because we're buying um, the same types of goods and services from the same types of suppliers, and it's important that we have continuity of supply, we have continuity of, of, in terms of, of quantity, availability, quality, so we start to build relationships up there. But if we're looking at, at um, indirect procurements, we, we, we tend not to, to build up relationships there. The, the direct procurements are, are, are more often than not dealt with by the procurement and supply function, but often indirect procurements are, are, may well be dealt with directly by the, the end user within the organisation. Okay, so, so the, the, the office manager might directly order items of office stationery or whatever, or, or, or the maintenance people might order uh, replacement items automatically without really working through the procurement uh, and supply function.